All right, we need to talk about tools. In this class, we're going to be working with and writing a lot of scripts, which means what I'm going to do is I want to actually use some type of editor. Now, you can use just about anything that you want to use as an editor. I highly advise that you use a text editor that recognizes coding formats. Python is a coding format. Now, in this class, I will give you the choice of two editors. You will have a, an editor, access to an editor called Sublime. You will also have access to an editor, call, editor called uh, Visual Code Studio. Now, what's go cool about these is this Visual Code Studio is free, does a lot of stuff. There is another, another one that I used to use back in the old days called Atom. I decided to move to Visual Code Studio because Visual Code Studio has a lot of expansion modules and tools that can be inserted in it, and it works with my Docker class, my Kubernetes class, and everything, as does Sublime. But um, I like using utilities that run on Mac, run on Windows, run on Linux, and of which all of these do. So those are the recommendations. Now, in this class, I'm going to be using the Visual Code Studio and we are going to use Visual Code Studio to visualize the codes that I've just gave, that I'm giving you guys access to. Remember those .pys that I went through in the previous video. What we're going to do is want to download those. We're going to open them up in the in the Visual Code Studio, and what we'll do from there is is that we're going to then have a conversation about how we're going to be interacting with Python, and that means we need to install Python. So if you don't currently have Python installed, we're going to need to take care of that also. So what I want to do right now is just walk through the process that we're going to be following as it relates to utilizing our editor. So if you don't have an editor and you want to follow along on your own laptop, you're going to be able to install one. I'll show you how. So what we're going to do is I'm going to dive right into the console here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and download my first script, my variables.py file. Now, what I'm going to do is I want to find editors. Now, remember, we said that we had Sublime. So I'll say Sublime Text Editor. And it'll take me to Sublime Text. And you can actually do the installation of Sublime, and you can see what's really cool about these things is, is once you tell them what language you're writing in, they give you really good visual representations of what code looks like. As an example, certain commands will be in certain colors and things along those lines, and we'll entertain that when we get in and we start looking at things uh, related specifically to um, Python. Now, another one that I, like I said, is the visual... Uh, code Studio. So I'm sorry, Visual Studio Code. And again, this is one that you can actually download from free, for free. You just need to make sure that you have the right one, which is going to be this guy right here. And again, you'll see it's going to give you graphical or it's going to give you color coding for the different sections of code. So all you got to do is basically install the proper version for your specific machine or your specific operating system, and then what you'll end up doing is being able to use those for configurations. Now, once that's done, what we want to do is we want to actually use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say Visual Studio Code, and I'm just going to open it up, and here I am. Now. I'm going to drag this over to the right just a little bit. Um, I may need to want to update this one. So yeah, I'll probably update this off camera. But what I want to do is I'm going to come over and take a look at a number of things. So first of all, this is my documents. This is going to be where I can search. This will be source control. So as I make changes, I may want to integrate with some type of source control engine. I could be using GitHub or any number of things. I can debug my code. I also have the ability to be able to add extensions. Now I'm using a set of extensions. So you see, you will see in here I have a lot of my AWS extensions in here that I'm, that I'm currently using. I have my Docker extensions, my Kubernetes. But the two that I want to make certain that you guys install are going to be the Python extension and the YAML extension. Yet another markup language, or YAML ain't markup language, depending on whose books you read. 
is going to end up being a data format that we're going to be talking about. Now, we'll probably talk about it more in the class than in this particular series because right now my goal is basically just to introduce you guys to the idea of being able to interact with Python. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say that I want to open and let's see what I'll do is I'll just open the download section that I just made. So I'll go to downloads and there's variables and I will go ahead and open the script. Now with that being done, I'm going to go ahead and close the sidebar and I'm going to drag down my terminal window. Now what's happening here is, is that in this editor I have the editor and I also have access to my Python screen. So one of the things I could do is I could come over here and say Python and hit enter. Now you'll notice that I'm running Python version 2.7 if I do that particular command. I don't want to use 2.7 in this class. I want to use version 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Python 3 and that's going to put me in version 3.7. Now I may up, again end up upgrading. Um, it's been a little while since I fired up Python. As you, I told you guys earlier, I do a lot of stuff with Ansible. But now what we see here is, is I have access to my script my Python script, it's .py, and the system recognizes it as Python, and as such, it's actually going to give me color coding for what we call keyword configurations. Now, you'll notice here, the, anything that's in green is referred to as a comment. It's not ordinarily executed or uh, run by the code, and what you'll also note here is I'm using this for the purposes of outlining what the individual sections are. So in subsequent videos, the next video, I'm going to talk about how to install Python. After that, we're going to dive into the meat and potatoes of something called variables in Python. And using variables in Python is exceedingly important because a variable is the name that we use to reference a memory storage space. So if I want to assign a specific value to a specific storage space in memory that I can access at a later date, I need to make a way to make reference to it, and I make reference to it using the keyword variable. So x equals whatever x equals. And then later on we're going to find out one of the cool things about Python is, is that Python actually autotypes the type of value that we're going to be storing in that memory space. It recognizes it as a, as a number. It recognizes it as a decimal number, something called a floating point number. It recognizes a string, a series of alphanumeric values. It recognizes many, many different things to include things like booleans, so true or false. And what we're going to find out as we explore variables, we're going to do it from the perspective of the information in that file. This is the information that's critical. You should also have access to our Python for Network Engineers compendium. And that's going to be a field guide that I wrote that's going to walk through key things that you may use. But keep in mind, anything that's in these .py files, like the variables.py files that we have in this class, are things that we will be using in both, well, in the class at the very minimum, possibly in both this video series and the class. A lot of stuff we're going to cover in the front part in this video series because I, want to, I don't want to spend a huge amount of time talking about Python fundamentals and basics when we actually have our time together in the Python for Network Engineers class. All right, so let's go ahead and look at what's involved in getting Python installed. And then what we'll do is we'll cycle back and we're going to start talking about actually interacting with the Python language. And we're going to begin by focusing on this idea of how to write a script. I'm Terry Vincent, and I'll see you guys in that video.